From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. A puzzling sight on Trinidad and Tobago's southwestern coast. Fishermen spotted thousands of dead fish littered along the beachfront in late 2009. Not even the birds ate the carcasses. As the evening tide rolled in, the fish, mostly sardines, washed up along the shoreline. The whole beachside, the was, whole just beachside was just dead fish. The whole sea, the whole sea floating stink. Stink. Fishermen, like 43-year-old Dragon, suspect that they know what's to blame. The burgeoning oil and gas industry. Blasting for natural gas causes underground rock to fracture, releasing gas, forcing it back to the surface. The industry is booming. But this means little to Dragon and his community. They say it's affecting an already low fish stock and is putting the country's fishing industry in peril. About the last five years ago? About the last five years, we used to catch fish by 400, 500 pounds. Now you can't catch 100 pounds of fish. You can't hold 100 pounds of fish. Dragon grew up by the seaside and is part of a group of 1,000 fishermen who depend on the sea for their livelihood. He supports a wife and two children. Before we could feed the family, you could buy something for the home, fix the house. Besides blasting for gas, fishermen here also believe that leaking marine oil rigs contribute to the problem. 22 years I worked, you know, 22 years I worked outside as a fisherman. In those years, they didn't have oil in the water or the waste. And with higher gas prices, 400 to 500 dollars per trip, Dragon and his friends say they're losing money. Livelihoods are very important to us. People's lives are very important to us. And this is why, you know, recently um, we did have a decision to make whether to allow the shutdown or not of a particular platform. Former Minister of Trinidad and Tobago's energy sector, Carolyn Sipersad Bachan, says that while she has no specific knowledge of why the beaches were packed with dead fish in 2009, Accidents do happen. Our state-owned companies, they have some aged infrastructure, so we've had several leaks. But she says the country is committed to ensuring safety of the water and the fishing industry. If there is an issue, then we do not take the risk. We prefer to shut down, and that has been happening currently throughout all our operations. Um, there are many areas that we have shut down because of health and safety risk. But even if this problem is solved, there's another challenge for local fishermen. They complain that deep sea trawling cuts into fishing grounds once available to them. Fishing for shrimp, deep sea trawlers erode the seabed, wreck nesting areas and drive bands of fish to new feeding spots. If trawling continues at its current rate, the world's oceans, according to a UN report, may be completely stripped of fish in the next 40 years. And for Dragon, who spent his lifetime fishing, it would be a huge blow to his family. The fish not staying, they're moving. That is a killer to the sea. Protecting the ocean and fish stocks worldwide will be on the agenda of the upcoming Rio Plus 20 summit. But for now, Dragon and his buddies continue sailing the sea in search of fish. It's a matter of survival. That's all they know. This report was produced by Mary Ferreira for the United Nations.